the Salala Legacy and welcome back to another episode of Coming Out on Top. So, let's jump right back in. So we gotta say, alright, I'll only go because it's important to you and I'm the greatest friend you could ever have. Aw, you're the best, Mark! And making these valuable industry connections is the most important thing I could be doing right now. Especially for the product I've got planned. School kept, or keeps you busy for the rest of the week. Friday. After a long day of classes, you rifle through your closet hunting for something to wear to the fundraising dinner. Ugh, excuse me. Whoa, so you're going to meet this Phil's, or this Phil's dad already? Sounds serious. Ah! It's not like that, Ian. I just met him. I'm sure Phil regards me as a or as civilian scum. Anyway, the next time Penny tries to set me up with one of her cousins, do me a favor and punch me in the scrotum. Will do. Penny's got the intuition of a potato dude. <laughs> yeah, well, I should know this by now. Anyway. <coughs> anyway, I'm having so much pro or so many Ah, so much difficulty reading, apparently. <laughs> anyway, the more I think about tonight, the more I'm feeling sick. I swear I'm developing an ulcer. Not only is Phil going to be there, but I'm going to be rubbing elbows with his heavily uh, decorated marine slash politician father, a bunch of wealthy tech tycoons, and, a vari er, and various other bigwigs. You're looking at this the wrong way, dude. The rich and powerful are just like you and me. Yeah, or yes, I hear some of them have emotions. <laughs> Seriously, they're super easy to charm. You want some advice? They love hearing about how there are more important things than being rich. Quote philosophy and nuggets of ancient wisdom. Uh, like what? Something from Aesop's Fables? Nah, everybody knows those stories. The tortoise and the hare, the old man in the glory hole. <laughs> what kind, or what kid doesn't know those by heart? You gotta quote more esoteric stuff. Like, the emperor is rich, but he cannot buy one extra year. Are you writing this down? I'll wait for you to grab a pen. No need. It's in the permanent memory banks uh, with all the other tips you've given me over the years. Want another tip? Badminton, dude. Badminton? I, s or I swore you just said badminton. Badminton's a good fat cat hobby because it's eccentric and non-threatening. I'm not entirely sure where you're getting all this advice. A silent film from the, or from the 2880s? Uh, a cartoon from the 50s, actually. You'd be surprised by the amount of by or biting social commentary cloaked in entertainment is uh, made for children. Well, do you have a monocle? Because I sense that's what's coming next. Monocle? <laughs> what a great idea! I totally don't have a monocle, but I do have something else you could use. <laughs> Ian dashes out of your room in excitement. You shake your head as you finish changing. After a minute, he reappears with a black object, which he plants firmly on top of your head. The billionaires will love this. Oh, gosh. I see you've finally gone insane. It's quirky. It's hip. It shows your ironic sense of humor. Something smells smoky. Is this a prop from one of your catastrophic magic shows? I so did not mean to set that frat on fire. It was totally their fault for having such incredibly uh, flammable curtains. You know... I think they sent us a bill for the scorched pool table, too. What's important is I, salv or I salvaged the style and accessory from the fumes. You could pop it open and close. You could pop it open and close, too. Use it like a frisbee. The pop open feature does have class written all over it. Dude, you have class written all over you. You're going to impress the hell out of him, Mark. You'll see. I still feel like I'm going to throw up. No worries. I've got this or these antacid tablets in the bathroom for when you or for when I scarf down too many pastry blah, 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 pastries at work. It'll calm you down, dude. It's next to my er uh, your toothbrush. <laughs> you got tonight covered, dude. 
You're going to charm their expensive made in Switzerland rich people socks off. You stare at yourself in the mirror as you swallow a few antacid pills. Keep the hat on for now. Funnily enough, the hat does feel comforting. Later. The hotel parking lot is crowded with luxury cars. You pass through a lobby filled with marbled surfaces and plush, spotless carpets. You and Penny walk through a set of double doors decorated with blue and white streamers. The room is crowded with men in suits and beautiful women in evening dresses and fancy jewelry. The sounds of hushed voices, soft piano music, and clinking glasses fill the air. Weird, you feel lightheaded, and more than a little woozy. By the way, you could totally take that off now. You know Likey? <laughs> a man who looks like an older version of Phil, handsome and impeccably dressed, walks towards the two of you. He's flanked by a forty something in er he's he's flanked by a forty something in a suit, who you assume is a staffer. Penny, glad you could join us. Phil's father glances at your hat, then you. He introduces himself. Donald Healy. Mark Matthews, a pleasure. You tip your hat. That's quite a hat you've got there. <laughs> Senator Healy eyes his companion uneasily. Mr. Matthews, would you like me to chuck that very stylish hat into the coat room for you? <laughs> no thanks. Penny <laughs> gives you a little kick. And maybe you should take that off now, Mark. Take what off? <laughs> Are you okay? I feel pretty good. I feel really damn good, in fact. Penny looks at her uncle and the staffer. Uh, my friend doesn't seem to be feeling well. I think he just needs a little water. If you'll, or if you'll please excuse us. The bar's over there. Please enjoy yourselves. The senator and his staffer give you a look of concern before they stroll away. Did you have a drink before we came here? No, my stomach was upset. So Ian told me to grab a couple of his cool-looking antacid tablets. Um, you know Ian's got a bunch of different pills and stuff that he stores in the medicine cabinet, right? For his zoology classes? What do you mean, Pen Pen? Animal tranquilizers! Ooh, Ian! Mark, stay right here. I'm gonna get you some water from the bar. Don't move. I'll be back with... Oh my god, I think that's the, that's the developer of sh sipping a martini! Penny bolts off. You stand near a table, steadying yourself with the back of a chair. Oop. Okay. <laughs> hey, Philbert. It's Phil. Let me take that hat for you. It's not my hat. I borrowed it. If you don't give me that hat, I'm going to throw you out. It's just a hat, man. I can't believe you have the nerve to show up here like, uh, like this is an important... Wait, no. I can't believe you have the nerve to show up here like this at an important fundraiser. It's a conversation piece, perfect for con er, conversating. Yo, or you are not a magician. And you've obviously been smoking something. Now here's the young man I've been looking for. You turn to see an older couple standing behind you. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Walker. Phil, your father mentioned you've just or you've just survived boot camp. Your father is so proud, Phil, especially since you're heading into recon er, reconnaissance. Well, I'm not there yet. I still have to pass my quals and train. It's a challenge just to get in. I'm sure you'll do fine. You're one of the most motivated and hardworking young men we know. As if your father could produce anything less. We most certainly need young men like you in the world. You should see the miscreants our daughter brings home. And it's, or it's my opinion she shouldn't be dating until she's at least 37. And just who is your friend here, Phil? I spotted him walking around earlier. You can't miss that hat. Oh, this is Mark Matthews. The fourth. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of my cousin's. Are you also a recruit? A recruit? <laughs> Not at all. I dabble. I recreate. I have my silly little hobbies. Oh, what sort of silly little hobbies? Uh, swimming. Oh, swimming. How lovely. 
Excuse me, Mr. and Mrs. Walker, but I was just showing Mark where he'd, er, where he'd be seated tonight. A fill of relaxed son. Your friend here is the most interesting person we've met in such a long time. We always end up at these political fundraisers, and frankly, no offense to Donald, but the crowd is always so dull. So very, very dull. Your friend is a fresh of breath air. Phil, your buddy seems like he's got personality, insight, a unique perspective on things. Isn't that right, Matthews? Uh, <laughs> the emperor is rich, but he cannot buy one extra year. <laughs> Mr. Walker slaps you on the back. I love this guy. I have an idea. Let's introduce you boys to the Violet. Mrs. Walker enthusiastically waves over a young woman looking disdainfully at a tray of, uh, I never know how to pronounce that. So, yeah, you guys know what that is. <laughs> that bartender had to make my mojito five times in a row. I just told him to get it on the fifth try. You know how waiting, or, you know how waiting over three minutes just makes you not want something anymore? Never mind that, Violet. This is Phil Healy and Mark Matthews, the fourth. These are the types of young men we want you to be meeting. Violet glares at Phil. I hear you're some kind of soldier. Marine. How come you're not wearing your dress blues? Those things are hot. We're not allowed to wear them for political functions. How many people have you killed? None. I just got out of boot camp. You know, service members love hearing that question. You're nice. Hardly. She glances at you. You're wearing a top hat. Why, yes. Yes, I am. Can I have it? You know, Violet, every increased possession loads us with new weariness. Listen to this, a fellow. That's what I'm talking about. Who is this clown? You hear someone panting behind you. Mark, I am so sorry that it took me forever. This spoiled rich bitch at the bar was taking forever to order a mojito. Oh. <laughs> Penny looks around and sees the walker staring at her. Uh, hello. <laughs> okay, everyone, looks like dinner's about to be served. Mr. and Mrs. Walker, Violet, if you'll allow me to show you to your table. Penny hands you your glass of water. So the sh lady won't even talk to me. I told her I was developing an app and she just rolled her eyes. I'd like to roll her eyes straight out of her head with a spoon. Well, I'll have, or I'll have the last laugh when I release Brofinder. Anyways, how are you feeling, Mark? Not entirely well. This hat feels like it's coming to life and squeezing my brains out. Uh, let's go eat something. That should help. Our table's over here or over there. Huh? For some reason, we're sitting behind the potted plant in the velvet ropes. Before you can move, you feel a hand on your shoulder. Hi, I'm Patrick. We met earlier. Yeah, I remember. You tried to check my hat. You touched the edge of your hat protectively. Yes, and I'm sorry. I just want you to know the walkers love you. You did a fine job getting them relaxed and in good spirits. They can be extremely generous donors. We're quite appreciative. He walks off. Huh, maybe I should have had you talk with the sh lady. Dinner turns out to be delicious. Unfortunately, you feel like throwing every- Okay, you notice yourself nodding off as Phil's father makes a speech. When you wake up, Phil is glaring at you. Penny walks you back to the car. You put your arm around her to keep from falling. You turn in early and pass out for nine hours. At some point, you dream about running through a meadow pregnant with twin colts. Okay, <laughs> Saturday. Rise and shine! Didn't I tell you to knock, Ian? And seriously, two Saturday mornings in a row? Come on, Mark, no slacking off. You're just getting started. Grab your stuff and get a move on, soldier. Hold on a sec, you're not even coming with me? No, I'm just trying to help you out here. I gotta work this morning. Why? That's not your usual shift. Yeah, well, the manager accused me of flirting with a customer who happened to be his 15-year-old daughter. 
belly tat sure had a couple of years. Now, I gotta work Saturday mornings for God knows how long. I think I've been framed. Regardless, I'm committed to making sure you go to the gym. Go get your bag. Ugh. Fine, fine. I was gonna go anyway. You grab your things and walked over to the gym. Alone. So what should you do today? Um... I guess it doesn't matter, right? You're here for a purpose, soldier. Hit the pool. You change into your trunks and dive in. Ah... Uh, this, or the water is a little cold at first, but gradually feels amazing as you um, acclimate to the temperature. You begin your laps. A sense of peace floods your mind and body as you get lost in the motions of swimming and breathing. You wish the rest of your life could be this simple. After about an hour, you change back into your gym clothes, enjoying a blissful post-workout buzz. You leave the pool area, passing by the racquetball courts. You don't see anyone of interest. You leave the gym feeling refreshed. Whew, you finally got some downtime this weekend. In terms of your studies, you're kicking ass. You and Penny are getting along well these days. You and Ian are on friendly terms. And finally, you got $260 in savings. How will you spend your extra time? You know what? Hmm... Invite Ian and Penny to the beach to fly your new penis kite in celebration of To Hell with the Children Day. Okay, sure. You enjoy the sun, sand, and fri or frivolity as hundreds of people fly their mature-themed kites at the beach. The aborted fetus kite seems to be getting the most attention, but you've received several compliments on your flying member, replete with white streamers and stunt handles that allow you to deftly guide the kite through a series of daring and exhilarating maneuvers. Everything is going well until Ian, flying the kite at, a lower, or at lower and lower altitudes, accidentally crashes it hard into Penny's butt. Surprise anal, he yells as everyone in your vicinity stops what they're doing and politely applaud. Your relationship has improved with both roommates. Yay, Monday. <clears throat> Looks like a busy week ahead. You've got an oral presentation coming up. Thursday night. You're in the kitchen creating a towering sandwich for yourself when... I don't believe this. What's up? You, Phil, things are happening. Huh? Phil hates my guts. Here, he wants to talk to you. Uh, hello, this is Mark. So apparently you've made fans out of the walkers. You can almost hear the disdain oozing through the phone. You're welcome. I do balloon animals at part or birthday parties, too. <laughs> well, they bought ballet tickets for Violet tomorrow night. They asked me if, er, to escort her and to please invite my wealthy friend if I could. So, you impress them. How, I don't know. So, you, me, and Violet going to the, er, to the ballet? Are you asking me out? <laughs> if you want to get technical about it, yes. Patrick insisted I called you. The walkers have been hinting at a major donation, so I'm obliged to ask. Oh, how romantic. Please feel free to say no. You know what? Count me in. I'd like to go. You're kidding. Honestly, I'd like to go. You hear a muffled noise as if Phil recovering the phone receiver and swearing. <laughs> Anything wrong? No, just allergies, and I'm impending sense or an, an impending sense of doom. I'll pick you up eight o'clock Friday night. I'll be waiting with bells on. You hear a pause and then silence. Phil is hung up. What the heck was that about? Are you going on a date with my cousin? He must really like you. Oh my god, you guys are going on a date. I knew this would work out. Friday. You give your presentation when you catch your professor, or blah, 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 your professor checking her phone. You hack a cough and shoot her a dirty glare. Friday night. After dinner, you take a shower and get ready for the ballet. Phil arrives precisely at 8 o'clock. Wow, you're prompt. I despise, or I despise tardiness. It shows a lack of respect for others and for oneself. So you're saying you respect me. You know, maybe if you relaxed a little, we could have some fun tonight. 
I need to be training for the recontest, not, escort, er, uh, not escorting Princess Snowflake on one of my few days off. I'm doing this purely for my dad. I don't consider this fun in any way. Well, that answers that question. <laughs> Phil pulls up to a fancy apartment building downtown. And that is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, by subscribing, you're becoming a part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.